Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the Master's Experience Series. Thank you so much for being early. Now, for the sake of this, we're trying to sign it at this moment. We'll just wait for another 10 seconds or so. In the meantime, how's everyone feeling today? It's Thursday. It's another day to the weekend. I hope you've made your plans for the weekend and are looking forward to it as much as I am. Now, looking at the numbers, I think we should be able to start soon. I hope you've got your lunch and the drink ready. So let's just dive right in. Welcome to the Master's Experience Series, brought to you by Headhunt in partnership with Nanyang Center for Public Administration, NTU. My name is Tammy and I will be your host for today. Broadcasting live at LLI, we have with us adjunct professor Ang Hak Singh, who will be presenting on the topic of Smart Nation for Better Living. Now, before I hand over the time to our speaker, Please note that there is a Q&A function at the bottom of your screen. Please feel free to type in your questions at any time and Prof Ang will answer them at the end of his presentation. Please also note that we will be conducting our feedback poll at the end of the, se or at the, end of the se session. So please stay with us throughout. Without further ado, I will now pass the time to Prof Ang. Prof Ang, over to you, please. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon, my brothers and sisters. Uh, the topics that I want to share with you this afternoon uh, is Smart Nation uh, Better Living. And I will cover basically the what, the why, the who, the when of Smart Nations. Let me first touch on why Smart Nations. Uh, Singapore is where we are today is because we are extraordinary. And we need to continue to maintain extraordinary as we go into the future. And smart nation is a very important strategy to maintain this cutting edge. So what have changed in, the, in terms of smart nation? Well, it can be first best represented by this diagram. I call it the smart revolution. Some 1000 years ago, if you have plenty of land, that is your competitive advantage. 100 years ago, through industrial revolutions, what is the competitive advantage? It's whether you have machine. And 50 years ago, where is the competitive advantage? It's whether you have access to information technology. But what about today? Today, the smart revolution is no longer about computers. It's about data. Why? Because with data, you can get insights. With data, you can get wisdoms so that you can be smarter, faster, and better. But as you all know, the world is getting very complex. In fact, the speed of change is no longer linear. The speed of change today is what I call exponential. And change today are not in a straight line, but change today are uh, in a network, a complex change. That is the reason why we need to embrace smart nations as a way to improve our competitive advantage. What is smart nation, you may ask? Well, for some people, smart nation is about technology. For some people, smart nation is about sensors. For some people, smart nation is about internet of things. But is smart nation only about hardware? I put it to you that smart nations, in fact, is not about hardware. Smart nation is about people. It's about people in the center. It's about the way we live, work, and play. And the other important part of smart nation is this. The live, work, and play is not in isolations, but they are an ecosystem because what you live, what you work, what you play are interconnected. Therefore, the question is, how can we be smarter and better in the term we live, work, and play? If you believe people in the center, then it must be what? Power to the people. What is the best way to put power to the people? Is to make sure that the smart nation is in the pocket of the people. 
If you search your pocket now, what do you find? For me, my pocket is a handful. Therefore, for smart nation, better living, it's about power to the people, power such that is in your pocket. And what? The pocket is about the handful. In my presentation on smart nation today, it's about power to the people. It's about how we bring technology to the people that transform the way we live, work, and play. And if you believe that that is smart nation, then it's translated to what? It's translated into three things. It's translated into smart government. It's translated to smart business. It's translated into a smart citizen. Let me now focus on smart government. If today I ask you, what is the role of the government? Many of you will think that the role of the government is to provide services. Yes, indeed, governments must provide services. But the role of the government go beyond providing services. The role of the government must be, when I provide services, do I build communities? In other words, in the process of providing government services, public services, or public value, I bring people along together. That, to me, is the transformation in the smart government. Let me elaborate. You know, the challenge of the government, one of the challenges is one of fragmentation. I believe many of you all will have heard the snake stories. Maybe I shall tell you again. Once upon a time, you were at your HDB block. You were at your home watching TVs. And then suddenly you see a snake in the house. What do you do? Who do you call? Well, if you suspect the snake is poisonous, you will call the police. But the snake is a smart animal. It's a smart reptile. They saw you calling. What do you do? The snake then went into, and go into your five foot way. Who do you call? Who the five foot way belong to? Do you know? Well, it actually belongs to the town council. So you call the town council. Then the snake saw what you are doing, quickly dash over to Grass Verge. Grass Verge belong to who? Who do you call? Well, you call the empire. But the snakes, again, this is a smart animal. He saw you call and then he went to the drain. Who do you call? Empire is P-U-B. You see my problem? You see my problem? My problem is one that is that sometimes we, 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 we specialize, but that fragment. But to the people, what they want is convenient. I call about the snake, someone help me. I'm glad to inform you that today, if you've got a snake problem, you only call one department, and that's NPAC. You don't care where the snake is. But what about if you see rubbish? What about if you see light spoil? And what about all those hardware issues, I like to call it? Who do you call? Well, the government has decided that there should be only one place you call, and you call that one place, it's known as the Municipal Service Office, or the MSO in short. So, how do MSO leverage on technology to provide convenience for citizens like myself to report on services, especially hardware services that are needed. This is where I'd like to introduce you to you, my first apps. You know, by, by the way, if you can see my handphone, huh? my handphone is apps, apps after apps, right? All you need to do is this. You go to the one service apps here, and you press the one service apps. That's it, you know? And then what do you do? You then, if you see, for example, the light is, you know, at night you walk along the, uh, before, you know, you walk from your house to the park and the park, and then you see all the lights is spoiled. All you need to do is what? Take a picture. And that's it. Because this app is geotech, you don't need to tell people where you are. No need. 
it then sends the things to be corrected immediately to the MSO office. Hey, this is really making use of technology to provide convenience to the people. This is public service. But by now, you know what is the problem, right? The problem is we raise public expectation. Imagine now if anybody take picture and send, take picture and send. In this internet world, the moment I ascend means I expect action to be taken. You know, hey, how, how many public servants do we have? It's not, it's, it's, it's mission impossible. This is where I'd like to introduce you to the version two of the apps. The version two of the app is very good because the version two of the apps now not only show what you have reported, but also show what other people have reported. A good example, you see rubbish in that particular place. And many people have reported, it then provides a Joe map to show where are the places that are dirty. First, it gives feedback to the resident who stay at that place. Hey, a lot of people are saying their place is dirty. Yeah? So it's a feedback. So the people now know, hey, I don't anyhow throw litter. But I tell you, it has an even better outcome. Because, you know, Singaporeans today, we like to keep the, the environment clean. I have a group of people who say, I want to clean the place. But sometimes they don't know where the, the place are dirty. So they always go to the same place, go to the beach, go to the beach. Hey, there are many places in Singapore that require cleaning beyond the beach. So they look at this map and they tell me, ah, now I know this place, oh, you are very dirty. We should go so that we can make Singapore a livable environment. So see, now version two of this app is not only about providing services. Of course, they will mobilize people to go and clean. There's no doubt about that. You will alert the town council. You better keep the place clean. However, more importantly, it now provides the opportunity for Singaporeans and residents who want to do good, know where to do good. So, my brothers and sisters, what have we learned using these apps? Well, we have learned using these apps is that when, when, when you design, when you, you design a technology to provide services, you must always ask yourself, is there a bigger things that you can achieve? And the, in the MSO situation, it's not about cleaning also, but it's also about mobilizing, mobilizing people so that at the end of the day, it's not for you, but with you. That is what it's all about. And therefore, it's very important for us to see public service as not only a service, but public service in building community. I'd like to give you a second example regarding to smart government. What is the challenge of Singapore today? Well, the biggest challenge we have today is about what I call aging population. Yes, don't, you no need to be a rocket scientist to know that Singapore is aging. And it's compounded by the facts that we are not reproducing ourselves enough. So aging come with health problems. We are like machine, you know, as you come to a certain age, some of the spare parts will be out of order. And one of the issue with aging have to be related to what I call heart problem, heart attack, for example. How do we ensure that people who have heart attack, especially among our seniors, that services that help will be provided as soon as possible? Because you and I know, if you ask the medical doctor, they will tell you the first five minutes when someone gets a heart attack, whether he has a treatment or not will determine whether will he survive. Or will it work? And even if he don't survive, or, or even when he survives, will he have a good quality of life? Because if your heart stops and the blood doesn't go to the brain enough, you may survive, but you're bedridden. That's not a good quality of life. How to address this? 
Of course, somebody said to address this, oh, we must have a lot of ambulances. Hey, but our population is aging. Do you expect uh, our heavy ambulance follow our senior citizen at the back? Cannot, right? Now, this is where I'd like to introduce you to yet to another app. Please download the apps, you know. I hope, I hope you have enough space on your handphone to download apps, huh? because after my talk, you have at least 10 apps to download. This app is known as My Respondent App from SCDF, Civil Defense. I will put it closer to you, it's from Civil Defense. You must, once you download these apps, these apps first will tell you, where is the AED machine? Singapore, we have put a lot of AED machine all over the place, you know. The problem is that you don't know where. But somebody have a heart attack. AED machine is critical. And this app not only got tell you where's the AED machine, because he know where you are because it's Joe Tech, but it also have quick reminder lessons on how to do CPR. Because when we can't sometimes we forget all the CPR steps we forget. This, this little gadget teach you very quickly so that you can apply CPR, apply first aid. And then there's one hot button you press. While you're doing all this, you no need to call. The system will immediately register. Somebody got a heart attack. That's all. You just press the button good enough. And just focus on saving the uncle and auntie. What does this app do? You think carefully. This app basically make every Singaporean a fast responder. It make every Singaporean a, a pseudo paramedic, so to speak, so that we can help ourselves. My brothers and sisters, the important learning lesson here is this. There are some services that is best done by the people, not necessarily the government, you know. When you get a heart attack, by the time you wait for the ambulance to come, sometimes it's too late. But if every Singaporean, every resident is able to provide that first response, it makes matters. Why? Because you are much nearer than the ambulance. Some services are best done by the people. And smart government will empower the people to do that. Yet another challenge, if you ask Singaporeans, is they say, Singapore, we need a lot of amenity. One example of the amenity is bus. If today I ask you, how many bus do we need? Your answer must be, hey, I want the bus, huh? but the moment I walk to the bus stop, the bus is there. If everybody wanted that, not only we have to make big investment, the whole road will be congested with buses. And you and I don't want that. But if you think carefully, what actually you want? What actually you want is what I call certainty. You will know when the bus is there so that when you go to the bus stop, the bus is there. Let me introduce you to another app. This app, is no is issued by LTA. This apps is my transportation apps. Okay, download this apps. I can tell you now. I'm delivering the talk in Lifelong Center in Yunos. I ask myself, where is the bus stop? Do you know? Hey, don't worry. This apps because it's Joe Tech is able to tell you where. Is the nearest bus stop. Better still, it tell you when the bus will be coming. Yeah, it will tell you what bus going to the bus stop and when it's coming. So that if I know that the bus is coming in 20 minutes time, you know what I'll do, right? I'll first walk to the cafe, buy a cup of coffee, sit down, no need to rush. Life is short, don't rush. Drink the coffee, then... Five minutes before I walk to the bus stop, three minutes before the bus come, ole. That is what it's all about. It's not about having more buses, but it's to give certainty to people. In fact, uh, the previous version of this app is even better. 
You know what they do, right? If you want to go to a particular place, you set it, you go out to the bus, you sleep. I don't know how you must have read from Hong Kong. There are people who sleep in the bus, you know, right? You sleep. And one bus station before your arrival, your handphone will shake and wake you up. Hey, this is what I call customer service. And you see, that's how detailed it is. But one important step that you must put is this. This app is so easy to use that my uncle and auntie can also use it. You know, because who use public transport? Especially, you know, when you're retired, you've got nothing to do. What do you do? You take bus from here, to A to B, B to C. Of course, you wear your mask uh, now and uh, don't congregate. But when this thing is over, hey. So therefore, simplicity of usage is the key. What have you learned? One thing I have learned from these apps, in fact, I found about the apps, is that the apps actually put people in the center. And one process they have used to design these apps is known as design thinking. Not start what LTA want, start what the citizen want. It's an important learning lesson. The government, Smart government really want to be smarter. And that's the reason why they are embracing in artificial intelligence. But the artificial intelligence is not only about better services. The artificial intelligence is about how can we do it together with the people. At the end of the day, it's about win-win. It's not only about we do for you, is we do with you and that build communities and better you do it with each other. Let's move on to smart business. People involving in the business will tell you today our technology is a nightmare. You know? Technology disrupted business upside down. How many of y'all still use cameras? If you use cameras, I think you are a little bit of a dinosaur, unless you are professionals. I don't use cameras. I use, again, remember, power to the people must be something in the pocket. I use handphone. What is the advantage of handphone over camera? You know, right? You take and you can send immediately. Camera cannot. And today you argue, oh, camera resolution is no good. I urge you to think and rethink back your words. Today resolution uh, is very high, you know. And not only is very high, this is a smart gadget. You can use it to edit. You can then use it to what? Amplify. And then you can use to send and you get feedback immediately. Now you know, uh, your old camera cannot do that. That's why... Technology disrupted business tremendously. Let me share with you a few examples. First, my brother and sister who are in the SME, I hope some of you are listening to my chit chat with you. My SME brothers and sisters, the biggest challenge you have is what I call economy of scope. You know why people say go to papa mama shop Sometimes because your product is limited, uh, because your short front is limited, then, you know, I, I, I want to buy something because sometimes I want to see many, many options. But your shop, is, you only provide me a few options. So that is the problem of what economy of scope. Yeah. Question is, how can we use technology to overcome what I call the challenges of economy of scope? The best illustration is this. Easy to talk about product. Let me talk about services. How many of y'all renovate your house? Well, the standard way, the old way of renovating your house is this. Huh? You go to the interior designer, right? It's a single small interior designer. And the interior designer asks you for your blueprints. You give the blueprint of the house. Then he asks you, what is your desire? And then based on your desire, you get a few of his, uh, probably two or three of his, uh, what I call creative people. You draw out and then give it to you and you look at it 
And then after that, you say, oh, you like this? It calculated the price. And then you look at the price, you like it, you pay, and then, then he will mobilize his carpentry, he mobilize his plumber and electricians to, to do your interior design. My brother and sisters, SME brother and sisters, how many interior designer you can recruit? How many plumber you can recruit? Even you say you subcontract, how many can you subcontract? Limited, very limited. But today, young people like me, I'm still young, huh? young at heart. Huh? You know what I do? I go to a website like this, Easy Home Fix websites. I then give and give them my blueprints. I then tell them what I want. That's it. You know what did they do now? They take what you, you, you wish for and they throw it to a group, not one, uh, a group, probably 10 or 20 designers. And these designers will then give, you got 20 designs. These 20 designs will then come to the consolidator. The consolidator will help you to rank one, two, three, four, five based on your need. And then what you receive is a ranking list of one, two, three. Then you look, you look at the first top three. My you, huh? it's the best idea from 20. Last time, only best idea from one. Now, best idea from 20. You select, you select the one. And then after you select the one, then there's a price range. You can decide the price, you know. You say, oh, I only want to do it in 30,000. Well, then what do they do? They then take your 30,000 with this design. They then throw it out again. And then someone will come back and say, this is doable. You then accepted it. The person then take the design. You know what you do? Not? Because it involves what? Carpentry work, electrician work, uh, and even sometimes it requires some specialists like flooring. You know, they, they, they take this, they then throw back to the, the platform again. And then these subcontractors start to build. We're not talking about one subcontractor, my brother and sister. We are talking about 100 subcontractors. They then build. And then after that, they, again, the consolidator, the project manager will manage for you. And then that's it. You pay according to the milestone. And then at the end of the day, do you know what you do as a customer? You give them star. Because the more star you give, the better price they can fetch in the future. Hey, brother and sisters, renovating your house is no longer the same. Huh? And guess what? For the companies, they are no longer limited by what I call economy of scope. Hey, that's how business have changed. You know? and, and the process use, of course, many of you all know, this process is known as crowdsourcing. Nothing new. Crowdsourcing has been available to the big player. But guess what? Crowdsourcing has transformed the small papa, mama shop, SME, so that you now can be a small player, but yet has the advantage of the big player. That's why small player can also compete in cheap, good, and fast. I give you another example. And that is the example of shopping. Shopping, you know, you know now, nowadays, uh, you know, uh, shopping, we, when you talk about shopping, some of people think of Orchard Road, if you got the money, lah, and some people think of the, the, the more uh, urban mall, something, your heartland mall and whatnot. My brother and sisters, for Papa Mama shops to compete with all these big mall, you have another challenges. One is economy of scope. The one is economy of scale. You don't have the scale. You have all the fixed costs. You got inventory costs. You got rental costs. You know, all this costs money, you know. So therefore, you cannot have many, many. How to overcome this? And this is something I'm very proud of. Three Singaporeans, Singaporean, I are Singaporean. Yeah? They together decided to form a platform known as Carousel. Hey, by the way, this company is spending listing her valuation is billion dollars. You know? That's why I get so excited. It's a Singapore hero. Okay? And if you download the apps, uh, my goodness, if you download these apps uh, on Carousel apps, you will be surprised that you can buy anything. No, you can even buy and sell house in these apps. You know, what well, Piang is not only sell uh, your normal uh, household items, but house. You no, know, imagine cars. You know? What does this app 
does. It means to say that today you can do business with very little overhead. It also means that you can actually say that you can, you, you know, because you don't have inventory costs, you can afford to carry a wide range of things. And because you are buying, you, you, you know, because, because there is aggregator in buying, you are not buying one piece or two things. You are joining others together to buy in bulk. And then at the back, you split. That's what this app allows you, allow you to aggregate so that you can have economy of skills. You know, the power is what I call just in time. Why? You, know, you may ask, where is the inventory? The inventory is in the, in the, in the uh, factories. Last time, the inventory must be in the warehouse. Today, who talk about warehouse? In fact, uh, if you think about it, you think about it. If the system is so good, uh, the factory also don't have inventory. The factory will embrace what I call just in time manufacturing. So that what does it mean? Huh? It means to say that today people order and you say that okay, I'm, I'm not in urgent, so therefore you give me discount. Why? It's possible. If you are not urgent, they will give you good discount. And then they take all this order, immediately they send to the factory. The factory see all this order and it manufacture. It manufacture just in time so that there's no wastage, so that there's no inventory cost. And everybody is win, win, win. So, my brothers and sisters, this is the new way of competition now. Economy of scope, economy of scale. You must have heard about the Toyota story. Toyota used to manufacture itself based on Toyota City. What is a Toyota city? A Toyota city is a city whereby the tire manufacturer, the battery manufacturer, the steel manufacturer, the leather manufacturer all rotate around itself like a, what I call value chain. And then it just pull all the supply element to the factory. But today I can tell you the Toyota factory is not only a city, it's the world. And they are able to do it through the technology known as computer-aided manufacturing. What effectively technology have done, have shifted business from one to one, to one to many, to many to many. That is the power, many to many. Now, my brother and sister in the SME, you cannot think one to one. You cannot think one to many. You must now think many to many. Singaporean favorite habit is what? Eat. We like to eat. COVID-19. The biggest challenge is we have to stay at house, but we also still need to eat. Who do we rely on? Food Panda, Grab Food, and many others. Have you ever wondered how on earth uh, that demand for food delivery is so high, yet they can do it? Have you ever wondered? This is because they overcome another challenge, the challenge of workers. They shift from your regular worker to gig workers. Brother and sister in the SME, you must also think of gig worker. Don't always think of permanent worker. You must lower your fixed cost as low as possible. Gig workers, do you know how they do that? It's through the process of what I call matching. Let me illustrate one example of matching. I think this is a low bang, a big low bang. You know, if I am a food delivery company, if I deliver food, like Food Panda, for example, do you know when is the peak period where people order food? They order food when they go home from work. So when I reach home, I hope that the food, then the food come, then I eat. Can you imagine now? You go home, but before you go home, you happen to walk past a restaurant. You go into a restaurant, you grab 10 packets of food. After you're going home, what? You go home, and then after that, you stay, and then you go to a neighbor, and then you distribute the food. And the last packet of food, you get it free. You know why? Because that's your commission. If you got this matching algorithm, who say got no manpower? It's how to leverage on what I call wasted energy to positive energy. It's how to what? Leverage on the flow because after all of us need to go home. 
You see, my brother and sister, this gives you an example of how we overcome what I call the challenges of factor of production by our SMEs. The food delivery give you a very concrete example that today business is not about cheap and good. Today business is also about convenience. Convenience. To sum up, smart business at the end of the day is about to be smarter, faster, and better. And finally, of course, I want to talk about smart citizen. What is smart citizen? Well, smart citizen is not about you receiving services. Smart citizen is about I not only receive services, but I also want to be involved. Yeah, today citizen, uh, I tell you, you give them like that, they are not happy. But you, when you involve them, they'll be happy. So the question is, how to involve citizen? How to involve citizen? How to involve citizens? And this is where I'd like to introduce you to another app to be a smart citizen, and that is the SG Care apps. I hope your handphones still work after you download all the apps. Huh? The SG Care apps is here. You see, this is the SG Care apps. And the moment you launch the apps, it know where you are. The first thing it tells you is, oh, you want to do good. Let me tell you where you can do good. Because it Jotek where you are, and in Jotech, where are the, what I call volunteer opportunities? Say, for example, halfway through the course, I decided all y'all oh, can go back. The course is over. So you say, hey, I planned three hours for this course, you know. Of course, uh, one hour, I talk two hours, you take notes, lah, and then think about it. If, if, if that's your assumption. Huh? Then you ask yourself, what are we going to do with the other two hours? Fear not. Use these apps. This app will tell you where you can spend your two hours meaningfully and purposefully. And if you still feel that you don't want to go out of the house, the apps even train you how to be a better volunteer. The next version of this app, uh, even track. You, you may say, oh, but I'm doing this very episodic. The next version of this app, the upgrade version, will actually track you doing things over time. So can you imagine, you get your own personal journey of doing good. A, life is not only about making money, la, my brother and sister. Life is also about helping each other. So that next time when you need help, someone will also help. So now you see, the apps actually enable, it's called empower you to be a better person. You go to the apps. This, there, there are many things the apps. I really encourage if there, if you don't want to download all the apps, I say it's okay. But you must download this app, really. My brother and sister, these apps are really, it really, it makes us a full person. Okay. Next is many of us as an individual, skill is important. But I can share with you something. After my talk, which is going to last for another 10 minutes. 10% 10 of what I say expired. Do you know that? Do you know that the half-life of knowledge expired faster and faster and faster? For those of you all who attend or study in a university, don't get a shock. Huh? I know the university, don't, don't get a shock. Don't, don't get a shock. What you learn in the university, by the time you graduate, Maybe, you know, 30%, 20% probably uh, need to be updated already. That is the reason why today universities are moving into what I call just-in-time learning. And NTU spend a lot of resources in doing this. You look at many of the platforms, many of the courses that traditionally are delivered online, or offline are delivered online. Why? Because online gives you the power of just in time. You can learn anywhere, anyhow, any place. More importantly, you learn when you need the skill. Just in time learning. 
So that is the future of education. If you ask my brother and sister, the first thing is Singaporeans, you know, we are very close to Friday already. Yeah. And you ever ask Singaporeans, hey, what are you doing on Friday? You know what's the reply? Oh, I'm planning where to eat. You, and you see, when you see Singaporeans on the road, what do you say? The, 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 the Angmo or the Western will say, hi, good day. The Australian will say, good day. You know, Singaporeans say what? Japa boy. Have you eaten or not? So food uh, is our unique culture. I tell you, Singaporeans like to eat. I give you a lobang where you can eat cheap and good. Download this app, my brother. This app is known as Itiko. Oh man, I tell you, this app is very good. Itiko. Hey, I don't, I don't collect commission, by the way. Itiko. What this app do? Uh, this app tells you, uh, why must you have dinner at 7 o'clock? Anybody have dinner at 7 o'clock? You also have dinner at 7 o'clock. What for? If you have dinner at 9 o'clock, I give you 50% discount. 5-0, no. Hey, my brother and sister, you can now go to expensive restaurant and eat 50% off. Just that you go there at 9 o'clock or 5 o'clock. Off peak. It makes sense to you. It makes sense to the company, to the, to the restaurant owner, because they already have the sunk cost. What they want to recover is the valuable cost. To me, is now who say good food must be expensive. Ah, see, technologies. This is called smart nation, by the way. Huh? Smart nation. But when you want to talk about smart citizen, very important, please don't talk to the head. You talk to the head, you got a big problem. You need to talk to the head, yes, but more importantly, you must talk to the heart. Talk to the heart. So if you want to make use of smart technology, you want to use, of, to the, use technology to transform people's life, talk to the heart. You need to address issues like motivation, capacity, and opportunities. So the other learning lesson is people are not the same. Don't have one size fit all, never. But you cannot have anybody have individual solution, cannot. What you need is to practice mass customization. If you want to know about this, please go and attend the course in NTU. Okay? Therefore, once again, Smart citizens is not about I receive service. Smart citizen is about empowering me. It's not to give me a fish, but it's to teach me how to fish. My brothers and sisters, the danger of smart nation is this. It divides the country into people who are smart and people who are not smart. Cannot. Cannot. So the implementation of Smart Nation must be that we must bring everyone along. Everyone. We leave no one behind. Leave no one behind. And to show you that we leave no one behind, I want to show you a video clip. A video clip that we make sure that our uncle and auntie are with us in the Smart Nation. Not only Smart Nation, but the entire Sweet that nation can offer. When I say nation, uh, it's not necessarily the government. Uh, it's also the corporates and the people. And you and me. Watch these video clips on how we empower my uncle and auntie. Lifelong learning means uh, continuing to upgrade myself, to keep in touch with technology and the news around the world. I'm very thankful to my family members for showing their support in my learning journey. 
My father has always been enthusiastic about learning and when I got hold of this Senior Academy book, I thought it was really interesting because it has got so many different courses. After attending the course in using the smartphone, now I can go into WhatsApp and connect with my family. We even have a family group chat to exchange photos and messages. After completing my certification courses, I realised that I could take part in Smart Nation courses and interest group in the CC. We have the first class of home page. I feel very excited. 那么我们几个就组织成一个烘焙兴趣小组，成立起来的话，就把我们所学习的东西回去 d i g c c 里面，跟其他的居民分享。我们也知道乐林学院也有参加义工的活动，回馈社会。我觉得这种活动对我们来讲非常有意义的，和非常开心的能够拥有一张文凭，甚至还戴四番帽啊！这个对我来讲。是想都没有想到的事情，还有期待再开一些新的课程，我还再继续读下去，还要戴第二层帽子。我的先生、我的孩子，他们都很支持我，所以我有更多的时间出来参加这个乐理学院课程。我学了理化课程之后，因为老师也问我们要不要去帮忙做。Question now, of course, is when do you implement Smart Nation? Well, my advice to you is don't plan until the cow come down. So when you plan until the cow come down, by the time you finish the planning, guess what? It's obsolete. The word to think about is this, rapid prototyping. And the process is this, think big. You must have a good idea of what is the big picture. Think big. But big picture, don't over plan. Enough planning is enough. Then start small. Look what you have. Start small. Because when you start small, the next thing you can then what? Scale up. But most important is act fast. Don't hesitate. I recall reading a sentence by our former our founding father, Mr. Lee Kuan Yew. And that is, hesitation is the root of all evil. Don't hesitate. So my brother and sister, when to implement Smart Nation? Think of these three words. Start big. Think big. Lah. Think big. Start small. And act fast. In conclusion, Smart Nation is not about the past. In fact, Smart Nation is not even about the present. But Smart Nation is about our future. And it's not only the government future, but it's the future of us together. And that's why this future is not for you, but this future is with you, by you. Thank you, and I hope you enjoy this morning, Sherry. You have a good day. I have a few questions and answers I will take. Uh, if you... Allow me to take, all right, let me, let me now take some Q&A. Eh? The first Q&A asks, uh, how do we get older generations to be involved in Smart Nation? You are very correct. Remember I shared with you, my biggest worry uh, is Smart Nation start to divide the society into smart and not smart. And one div dividing line is this. Uh, I call the, the generations, the Madaka generations and below, they, are, they got the advantage of education. Why? Because the pioneer, the pioneer generation work very hard. They ensure that the medical generation and below have good education. Because most of them, therefore, are what I call IT literates. The problem is the challenge we have is with the medical generation. A, they build the road, we enjoy the road. They plant the tree, we enjoy the shade. And now you've got smart nation, you leave them behind. Can or not? Can I right? So I hope the video tapes that I showed to you just now, what I call the senior academy. By the way, I set up the senior academy when I was in People Association. Exactly what you say in your question. 
targeting at my uncle and auntie, particularly the pioneer generation, so that they will not be left behind. But I share with you a secret. Today, if you go down to the ground, you'll be surprised that the biggest usage of Facebook is who do you know now? It's my uncle and auntie. My goodness, you know, today they take picture. You know, remember a handphone take picture. Where do they post it? Hey, I tell you, uncle and auntie, they like to talk, right? But they also like to post picture. Oh man, I tell you. So don't have this idea to say that pioneer generation cannot be a population usage or cannot be a smart citizen. They can. So that will be my answer. You have a good question. We are doing about it. But I think more can be done. Who can do it? I think the government and the people need to do it together. Can you imagine the grandchildren teaching the grandfather how to use IT? It's not only about using, it's about intergeneration bonding. That is the bigger picture, right? The second question asks, where can I find business grant? Oh, my brother and sister, you go to Enterprise Singapore website. You key in the word digital grant. I tell you, a lot. But I'm serious. Grab this opportunity now. Never be the history that Singapore government, that our government is so willing to support in digitization. Why we do it? Because we believe that this is the way that we maintain to be extraordinary. This is the time. Next time, I think the grant may not be there already. So please do it now. Huh? If you still got a problem or are unable to find the grant, uh, you send an email. Somebody later will, will give an email. You send to that email. I will make sure I make sure I point you where you can get your grant. Can just like Nike say, just do it. Huh? Desmond say, wow, you introduced a lot of apps. How come now then I know? <sighs> That's a problem. The problem uh, is today uh, is what we call, we got too many apps. Do you know that? We got app fatigue. Just like previously, I told you the snake story, right? Remember the snake story? We got government, many government departments. So poor citizens have to go all over the place. Happy news to tell you. On the government side, we are consolidating. Hey, I, I, I just retired. I transited from the government to the education sector. Okay? And I can share with you what the government is doing. The government is now putting all their apps into what? Consolidate into a master apps. It's called whole of government apps. You go to that one particular app, you find the whole suite of government services. That's what we want, right? That's what we want. Now, the challenges is for you in the private sector. If you are in the SME, you are the papa mama shop, even I Google you, your name will not appear. So what do you need to do? You need to work with your associations. There's an association known as the Hawker Center and Merchant Associations. You need to, you need to hunt as a pack. Lah. You don't do it alone. You do it alone, people don't see you, but you put it together. You hunt like a pack, like the Korean table. You work with the association, that is the answer. Okay, brother, again, if you don't know where to go, if you can tell me what is your business, I can point you to your association, but you probably know better than me. Saifuddin asks, you know, giving these disruptions, there's a need to be selective in selecting courses. Hey, you are right, huh? Don't don't go and attend all the courses, you know. You know, you, 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 before you attend courses, you must ask yourself what you want in life. You must have a very clear idea. Only when you want, you want to know. Say, for example, today I may be, a, for example, if I'm a security guard, you know, many of you all, if you do a good, you, hey, you know who am I now? You don't know who am I, don't get a private detective to check on me. You just Google. The moment you Google Ang Hak Seng, you see everything. You know not? Okay. So what you need to do is this. Say, for example, you're in the security line. I used to be in the security line. I used to be a policeman. Ah. Okay? 
So you are in the security line. You want to now ask yourself, I want to upgrade myself. Security line related to security line is what? Hey, it probably could be what? Could be what? What I call security management system or could be even forensics, security forensics. You want to know about it. Uh, now you got a target in mind. And once you got a target in mind, you ask yourself, with this, I will have better career, you know? Because now I'm a security manager, but we add on to computer forensic. Now I can deal with sophisticated system. And, and I can tell you, computer forensic is a big thing, you know? That enable you to have better security. Remember? Smarter securities. So, then you attend a course on computer forensics. You attend a course on security forensics. So, my, my question to you is this. Don't go and attend courses blindly. Have a very clear idea in your mind. If you're not clear, take a piece of paper and write what I want to be in three years time, five years time, 10 years time. And after you know what you want to be, then ask yourself, what are the skill set required? Today, our people are not chasing after paper qualification. So what, you got 10 master degree. The employer look at you, so what? What skill you have that's more important. So after you identify the skill, then you identify what qualifications support the skill. Do it like that, I think you'll be all right. Okay, Saifuddin? But I like your question. It means to say that you are a lifelong learner. And now, please see what courses NTU can offer to you. Huh? Susan, I observe the challenges of the medical generations is language. I think the Madeka generation got no problem with language. It's the pioneer generation that problem with language. The Madeka generation, I am a Madeka generation. Madeka generation basically speak good, reasonably English. But even that, I am happy to share with you. Today, you go to a lot of government websites. you find that it's now in multiple languages. Default is English, yes. And even if there's no language, no, no uh, other languages, today they are building what I call translator. Hey, even you can do that. Uh. You use Google Translate. Mind you, uh, today uh, I don't, I, I don't, I, 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 you know, if I go to, if I need to speak Malay and uh, in a very short time, I, I type in the text, I go to Google Translate and immediately it gives me the text. Not only in Malay, in Chinese, in whatever language you want, you know. And you press the button, it will teach you how to pronounce. So, brothers and sisters, you can do self-help, but I agree with you. We should be more, what I call, more inclusive. Inclusive means what? We must make sure that our apps do support. And, and some of them do support translator. Some of them do have other languages embedded in it. Not in detail, but good enough for people to understand. But I can tell you the challenge is not that. The challenge is some of my uncle and auntie don't know Mandarin, but they only know Hokkien, Teochew, dialects. Uh, that one, I got no answer. The one, the only answer to that is this. I, I, I really encourage the younger generation. The pioneer generation plant the tree for you to enjoy. It's a time for you to pay back to them by helping them. Okay, that is the answer. Graeber say there are so many apps. Yeah, like I told you right, there's a whole of government apps. Akan datang on the way. Okay, you'll be happy to know. In fact, some of the apps is already like that. For example, there's another apps. Sorry, your handphone burst away now. Not bus, you should download another app, Kaka. Huh? This app is known as moment of life. This app actually tell you uh, that if you are a mother, right, you are a young mother, you have a young baby, what do baby needs? From the age of, of one or, or, or point something to the age of five, your entire suite from vaccination to school to you know, talk, all put it in together for you. So in the other you it is no longer based on services, but it's based on where you are in that particular segment of life. That's why it's called moment of life. And they got another one moment of life for people who are above 60 years old. They put all the 60 years old thing together. 
easy for you to search. Oh, thank you, uh, uh, Chunhao. Thank you for your kind words. You know, sometimes we forget to thank people. You know, your kind words like this uh, will inspire me to do even better. Okay? By the way, uh, if you want to know, uh, we are doing it not because of pay. We are doing it because of passion. Huh? Thank you. Thank you for your kind words, uh, Chunhao. Gabriel, how to keep the data safe? Hey, simple lah. I tell you uh, between you and me, uh, first uh, we got problem with our password. What's your password? Probably is what? Your IC number. Or your birthday. Or your wife IC number. Or your wife's birthday. Hey, this is not easy to, this is very easy to break. First thing first, you tell me data security is you must take responsibility first. Second is you must you must work hard lah. You got a system that you don't upgrade. You don't every time there is a patch file coming, you don't patch. Hey, you just press the button patch lah. And third, when you use state products, you know nowadays, uh, CSA when you buy a router, they got a safe. You know, got a security classification. Buy a safe one lah. But hey, brother and sisters, if you are like me ah, normal citizen ah, don't over specs ah. The best form of security is don't talk to anyone. But if you are a normal citizen like me, okay la, basic security good enough. Sensible la, be sensible. Huh? Last question, saying that there are many apps, how to avoid confusion. Oh, I can tell you, my brother and sisters, you don't attempt to understand all the apps. You only attempt to understand those apps that you are you need. Okay, because there are too many apps. I have not, I have seen a consolidator of apps for the government. I have I am starting to see consolidation of apps from the, the associations, but I have not seen consolidation of apps from the people sectors. Sometimes you may not want to consolidate so that you empower the people, more, more opportunity for the people. But my advice to you is this. Don't try to learn all the apps. Learn the apps just in time. Okay? Otherwise, it will be overwhelming. So my brother and sister, I hope my time is up. It's two minutes over time. <laughs> and I hope this morning's session is useful to you. And for those of you all who require follow-up, please uh, come back to me. I'm most happy to help. Uh, you, as a closing address, uh, this course on smart nations uh, is what we are pushing very hard in uh, NTU. As you know, smart nations is the way to ensure that Singapore continue to be extraordinary. Is if you like, is we don't have a choice. It's about our survival. Thank you, and you have a good day. I hand over to my dear sister, Catherine. Sister, over to you. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Ang. Um, with that, you bring me, bring us to the um, programs that we're going to offer to share with you. That is the Masters in Public Administration and the PowerPoint. Okay, let's move on. Okay, Master of Public Administration is the master program offered under Nanyang Center for Public Administration. And of course, Dr. Ang is one of our key lecturers delivering the important course. Okay, so the objective, the aim of this program is to nurture the new generations of um, young public leaders, as well as a business leader. I will share more with you why it, we included um, business leaders and non-profit organizations and to groom them in public policy making and governance. And it's a hands-on education with a special focus on the Asia perspective. And we also look at the, um, the real life applications. Not only that we have faculties that is in uh, teaching this course, we also have former minister who conducts um, guest lecturer and practitioner like Dr. Ang is sharing the real life. And we totally agree with Dr. Ang that um, 
information and knowledge expire very fast now. And that's the reason why our alumni, our graduates from this program, we keep inviting them back to the classroom, sitting together with our students to cross-learn with each other and upgrade their knowledge. So it's a continuing education, even after you have graduated, we are welcome back to the classroom. Okay, I, I think I would like to also, um, let me go back. Can we go back to the slides earlier? Okay, so um, with that, I think I would like to invite Dr. Ang to share more insight about this program. Uh, Dr. Ang, please. Sure, thank you. Thank you, Catherine. The, the Master in Public Administration programs, as what Catherine has said, has two unique features. One feature is, is focus on Asia. And I think that's important because Singapore economically, publicly, and socially are connected to Asia. And you know that the growth, somebody asked me, what is Singapore competitive advantage? Singapore competitive advantage cannot be seen in these 270 square meters or square kilometers. It must be seen from the fact that if you take an aeroplane five hours and you, you draw a radius, that is Singapore competitive advantage. And to do that, therefore, it's not only that you must understand public administration in Singapore, you must understand public administration in the region, in Asia. And that's the first unique selling point. The second unique selling point is what is NTU? Many of y'all will know NTU anchor a lot on technology. And therefore, the second unique, and, and I already shared with you just now, technology, particularly smart nation, digitization to the core, is going to be our next wave of competitive advantage, regardless of whether you're in the people sector, the public sector, or the private sectors. It leverage on this call. And of course, the other call about this public administration program is because of the close connectivity with China. You know, many of uh, the students uh, are from China. The Chinese admire our system as much as we admire their systems. And this gives you the opportunities to learn, to understand, to interact with a very big, a very, for SMEs and for, for business, a very big market, and that's China. And third, as what Catherine has shared with you, this course don't attempt to teach you public administration of the past. This course attempt to teach you public administration of the present, and give you a glimpse of what public administration will be in the future. It's a future-oriented program. And the trainers are not because they got very, very high, what I call intellectual. No, the trainer are chosen because they got very, very high practitioner skills. And that's what matters. Remember I told you, Today, the new future is not about how good is your knowledge. Today, the new future is about how good is your skill. So that is the unique value proposition of this program. I hand over to you. Thank you. And Dr. Ang. So I have actually captured some of the topics that will be taught in this program. Um, you look internally in public policy making in innovative way with the people-centered, but Dr. Ang has shared earlier, people-centered public policy. Um, with the people at the center, we look at Singapore economy, public administration in general. Singapore public administration is taught by Dr. Ang. And we also look at further than that, with cost-benefit analysis. And around the world, the security governance, the international relationship. So it's a well-rounded courses with two core, core courses, which is, uh, I'll come to this later on, uh, with two core courses that is compulsory and, it, and they are elective for you to choose depending on your interests. Okay. Okay. And for full-timer, you can do it in a very sweet durations of one year. For part-timer, it will be a two years or you can still complete within one and a half year if you want to, you have better time management, you can finish within one and a half years. And this is some of the structures that you can, you can look at, the combinations of the courses to make up the degree requirement. Two core courses plus six electives. So 
eight core courses, eh, sorry, eight courses plus a capstone paper, and that will fulfill the degree requirement. And these are the courses that I show you late just now. Um, this is not a full list. Full list you can find on our website, which I will show you later at the end of this slide. And we also allow you to cross links with our sister program where you can broaden your knowledge. This is a program on China and governance, uh, China and global governance. They have the core courses. You have the freedom to choose any two courses out from here. Again, this is only an uh, extracted list. It's not the full list. So it's very specialized that you can look at region, um, religions in contemporary China, China in re um, regional and global perspective. So it depends on your interests. Um, in this program, they also touch on international relationship with um, China in the focus and seeing how is China's influence and impact on the whole world. And this is the manager economics, another master program that we have. If you're good with numbers and economics, you can choose wealth management and fintech, digital marketing analytics. So it really depends on your interest. And not only that, we actually step out of our, our centers. We also work with other schools in the university. And the tuition fee is very important. It's 32,000 for all students, full-timer or part-timer. Full-timer will be able to complete within two semesters in two simple installments, part-timer in three installments. And if you have some plan to do a full-time, be a full-time student, you are qualified for the ASEAN and international scholarships where the full tuition fee is waived. So, but this is um, assessed case-to-case -case basis by applicant. So send in to us and we will reply to you after you have sent in the online application. So simple as that. So what's the admission requirement? A simple degree, bachelor degree with a good standing, two year minimum working experience. And we assess your application case to case basis because everyone is unique. You might be from a different nationality, different background, different specialization and work experience. So we'll look into it. And for English tests, TOEFL and apps, unless your first degree is not conducted in the medium of uh, English. So you will need the TOEFL test. I hope I'm not speaking too fast, but don't worry, we'll share with you this PowerPoint at the end of this talk. And this is the QR code easier for you to scan and apply. And you can always visit our website to find out more information on what courses we're offering, more details about the program. And of course, in the website, you can find our contact details. There are two intakes. So the upcoming intakes that we're looking at is July. The admission is already open. So you can send in the application or uh, you like to talk to us, you can always email to us. The email is at the right bottom corner. Again, I will send this PowerPoint to you. And if any questions you have, you can always type on the, on the chat group, on the Q&A. While waiting, if you have any question, uh, yeah, we always say the end is just a new beginning. So as you start the program, it's always a new beginning. Okay, so just quickly to glance through, this are uh, our wallpaper of our faculties, who are all the top um, professors in our university, including our previous um, former presidents of the university, Prof. Su Guanning, Lim Chong Ya, the economist, Singapore economist. They might not conduct a full course, but they will definitely be one of our speakers that we will do our best to invite. And of course, Dr. Ang is there. And Li Ming Jiang is from the International school specialized in international relations. Yeah. And okay, just a quick one to show you the beautiful landscape of NTU. And of course, we have summer school. It's COVID. We are going to go do it very fast. We have exchange program. You have been interested to Waseda for a trimester. Okay. So um, is there any questions that's coming in? If not, uh, maybe we'll end here. And this is the wallpaper of our where our students are coming from. Okay, thank you very much for the afternoon. Thank you, Catherine, for your time and Prof Ang for bringing us on this inspiring learning journey. We hope you've enjoyed today's session and we'll now invite you to participate in our feedback poll. Please give us your honest feedback so that we can further improve on this master's experience series. The feedback poll should be popping up on your screen, so please take a few moments to share with us your feedback.
You just take a few more seconds for the feedback to come in. Your feedback is very valuable to us, so we appreciate you taking time to do this. Great, thank you for your feedback and for joining us today. This Master's Experience Series is proudly brought to you by Headhunt in partnership with Nanyang Center for Public Administration, NTU. Please join us at our next session on Tuesday, the 18th of January on the topic of Neuromarketing and the Power of Subconscious Brain from Nanyang Business School. Do sign up early on our website, postgrad.sg. With that, we'll end today's session. This is Tammy signing off. See you. Bye.